So we got a box with an open top. It's going to be constructed from three feet by three feet square pieces of cardboard, or one piece of cardboard. We're going to cut out squares from each of the four corners by bending up the sides. We've got to find the largest volume that such a box can have. Okay, so we've got three feet by three feet square piece of cardboard here. And we're cutting square corners out so that we can fold up all the sides and make the box. So I cut out my corners. Do I know the dimensions on the squares here? So that's not given information, is it? So we'll probably want to highlight the uh, dimensions of those squares with a variable. So I'll just use x here. I'll say the dimensions on each of the squares is x by x. All right, so as we <coughs> fold this up and create the box, test our visual skills here this morning. All right, if the squares are x by x, as we fold this up, then the height of the box is going to be x, right? Okay, that makes sense. Now, it'd be nice, since we got to make a connection to volume here, and to find the volume of the box, we got to take the length times the width times the height, right? Uh, we know what the height is, but can we figure out what the bases are going to be? Are the bases going to be the same? Like the length and the width being the bases, that's what I'm talking about here. Not going to be the same? Well, let's see. This edge right here, I could say that corresponds to this part, right? Overall, I know the length from here to here is, what is it, three feet? Yeah, three feet. So I'm taking out this section, which is an X. I'm taking out this section, which is an X. So I'm taking out two X's from that three feet. Could I say that this remaining distance, which is from here to here, would be three minus those two X's? So that would be this piece right here, this side. So let's say as we fold up this box to create this front edge, that's going to connect up here. So is that going to be the same thing? Okay, that's going to be the same thing. So ultimately, the question is find the largest volume that such a box can have talking largest vo volume, we're talking about a maximum concept. That means our function needs to connect to volume. If we know the volume for a box is length times width times height, and we've got our dimensions in here in terms of x, all I got to do is substitute accordingly. My volume function, we could say v of x equals, well, my length could be this front piece, this front edge, 3 minus 2x. My width could be that side edge of 3 minus 2x. And then my height is going to be x. And that's nice because everything's in terms of x. So if we multiply all that out, well, basically I'm foiling this stuff through. And then I'm going to have to distribute an x through to that. So distributing the x through, as I foil, I've got 3 times 3 here, 9 times that x, so 9x. Um, outside terms and inside terms, that'd be a negative 6x for each, that's negative 12x, times an x, the negative 12x squared. And then multiplying the last, you'd have what? Positive 4x squared, right? Times an x, so plus 4x cubed. That could be my volume function here. And that's the key with all these problems, is getting to that point in the setup. All right, 
value. So at this point, we take the derivative of the volume function. That would be 9 minus 24x plus 12x squared. All right, we take that derivative. We explore where the derivative of this volume function equals 0. So 9 minus 24x plus 12x squared is going to equal 0. Got a quadratic here, so some kind of factoring might be in play. Looks like there's a greatest common factor. Greatest common factor of 3 we can take out, right? I take a 3 out and maybe do a little rearranging here just because we're more familiar with having that squared term first. It'd be 4x squared minus 8x um, be plus 3, all that equal to 0. This 3 does not have an x attached, so we could divide that out. That's not going to factor into the solution here. If I factor this quadratic, let's see, is it factorable? You know, we got 3 and 1, right? Maybe try 2x and 2x. Make it minus across the board here. That should work, right? It's minus 6x in the middle. That's minus 2x on the outside, so that's minus 8x. That would work. You got your two factors now. We set each of those equal to 0 and solve. Um, if you've got 2x minus 3 equal to 0, then x is going to equal how much? It's going to be 3 halves, right? And if our other factor was 2x minus 1, well, that's going to be 1 half. All right, let's go back to the question now. We figured out what x is. It's like, do we have our answer yet, or is there something more we got to do? Well, it says find the largest volume that such a box can have. If we're going to find the largest volume, we got to go back to our volume function, which is this guy. And we've got to take the x that we found, and we got to plug in. Now, we've got two x's. Can't have two x's. Can only have one. Which answer makes the most sense? Well, one way to figure this out is go back to your dimensions, right? Or you could just plug it in the volume because it would work itself out there, too. But if you go back to your dimensions, take three halves. Um, if you take three halves and you plug in to these little edge lengths, what do you get? You get zero, right? So we can't have zero as a distance for a side. Now, when you go back and plug in one half for any of those, and again, that would work itself out as you plug back into the volume function, one half works out. One half makes sense. So we take one half, we plug back into the volume function, substituting for all of our x's. So what do we have? We had original volume function was 4 times 1 half cubed minus 12 times 1 half squared plus 9 times 1 half, right? If you plug all that in and do the uh, computation, it should work out to be 2 if you do it correctly. You can check me on that, but that's what I've got up here in the solutions. So unit of measurement on this, we were working in terms of feet. Since this is volume, we'll say 2 cubic feet. That's our answer.